I'm Dr. Bryce Dyer for Sut Border, and this time with a bit of race board science, we're going to be talking about the art of drafting. Drafting, well, what is drafting? Drafting is basically whereby you as a paddler gain shelter from someone that's positioned around you uh, in a race or when you're touring, and it's designed to save you energy, your own energy, or alternatively, just to generally maximize the speed that you can move at as a group. And a few of you together, and known as a draft train, commonly known as a draft train in sort of racing parlance. Well, what's the gain here? Well, no one's ever conducted a scientific study into drafting, but if you take another sport, like swimming for example, by having one swimmer behind another, actually can save the swimmer that's behind 25% of their energy. So they're getting a, an increase in speed, or they're maintaining the speed they're at for a lot less cost, which is pretty cool when you're racing and pretty much essential if you want to really make sure you get every amount of advantage that you can seek in that kind of environment. Who's gonna be looking at this? Well, actually, is it for the racers? No, it's not actually. It's for anyone, any kind of paddler, whether you're touring, whether you're out for an adventure paddling in a group or with friends. Basically, it actually allows you to all share the wealth, share the load, and share the energy cost so you can paddle for longer all together and actually help those out who might be struggling. So actually, it doesn't have to be just for the serious racers. It can be actually for anyone that's actually looking to try and actually make their paddle more pleasant and perhaps make things a little bit more even between paddlers that are unbalanced in terms of ability. How do we do it? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do it with three trusty rubber ducks. So let's uh, we'll position our rubber ducks in a draft train. What you've effectively got is you being the paddler will then come in behind another paddler and then gain an advantage because you're being sheltered from the water flow by the actual paddler that's in front. And you can position yourself in a draft in one of two ways. You can do it in the rear like this that probably gains the most advantage, but you can also do it slightly off to the side whereby you're picking up a little bit of the, the draft and the weight from the tail or in some cases the nose of the board that's actually positioned in front of you and you get this in swimming as well um, sometimes you see with open water swimmers they call swimming on the hip which is whereby they've actually moved out to the side and their front hand is actually lining up with the hip of the swimmer in front to, to still seek shelter so it doesn't have to just be behind it can be either side of that board now the closer you get the bigger the saving you're going to have um, if you position yourself a meter or two back you're still going to be getting some draft, some shelter from the board that's in front. But actually the best way to do it is to get yourself within about three to four inches of the board that's in front, close enough so that you're not bumping their tail um, or damaging the nose of your board. It's not a great way to make friends, but get as close as you can. And this actual distance is affected by which board class you might be racing in, for example. Um, if you're paddling in a short board, uh, something like 10 foot inflatable maybe, uh, Nash 1 inflatable class, the boards are shorter and move slower and as a result the draft zone that's behind the board that's in front is a lot smaller. The faster the board, something like a 14 foot or an unlimited, the draft zone, because the board in front is moving faster, the boards are moving generally faster, the draft zone is slightly larger. So it's important, depending on what your board class is, to get as close as you physically can and hold your position as well as you can. As you enter the draft zone, you're going to find that you get a little bit of bump and chop to start with because you're crossing the lines of wake and chop off the boards that are in front or possibly around you. But as you get into position, things should calm down a little bit. You'll get a little bit of nose slap as you cross those, it's what I call nose slap, when you cross the lines of wake, but then it should stabilise. And what you'll find is as you enter the best possible draft, you'll almost feel like you're getting a bit of suction. You feel like your board's being sucked in to the board in front, and that is when you've entered the best position and that's one of the cool things about draft trains people often think that a draft train is just one guy doing all the work whilst everyone behind gets a free ride but actually it's a little bit more complex than that if the draft train is stable i.e. it's not swinging around quite wildly if it's actually three experienced paddlers all working together all in a reasonably straight line the really cool thing is that water flow doesn't see it as three ball paddlers it only sees it as one and the water will flow around more effectively and more efficiently because the water is only seeing one long thin shape craft rather than three squat fat separate ones. And as a result, all three will actually go faster than they would have done. So actually the guy in front, if the two people behind are good enough, will all get a little bit of a boost in speed. The next thing really is that where and when 
this is actually going to take place? Well, draft trains typically take place as soon as the starting gun is fired. What you'll find is on the start line is everyone starts and then as the stronger paddlers begin to emerge, everyone then jumps in behind and the train is then formed. And sometimes trains form and break up over the course of the race, which is kind of the next thing. It's really about train jumping. Back in our train, if you're gaining shelter from the board in front and a faster paddler comes through, it might be a good time to hop on that train and take the faster train further up the road for a while and maybe the actual person that was leading the last one will hop on the rear or maybe they'll just be ejected but the point is where you are is actually getting the best bang for your speed buck over the course of the race. Two more things, one sportsmanship. No one likes someone that's going to actually sit on their tail for the whole race and then at the very last second come round it and tries to sprint for the line. Share the work at the end of the day. You're not gonna make many friends, and although it might not bite you in that race, it might come back to haunt you in later races when you realize that people are unwilling to work with you because they know as you're just someone who's just gonna sit there the whole time, getting advantage and not shouldering any of the workload. Share the work. We do it in cycling. It's done in other sports like swimming and open water swimming. So do it in supboarding as well. It's good sportsmanship. And the last thing, and the tactical thing, think very, very carefully about your finish effort going back again to our train, if this is coming up to the finish and you are all going for a legitimate sprint, don't underestimate the time it takes to get from the back to the front to win the race. If you're about five seconds behind, and to give you an idea, five seconds is about sort of like that, it's gonna take you about 45 seconds at normal racing speeds to get up to, in most situations, round and through the line. That's actually a really long time. So even if you're really close to someone, sometimes it's actually worth moving up on the port or starboard side of their board, position yourself there and cut the distance down so it cuts your sprint duration down to go for the line. So as you come up to the line, it's often worth maybe five, 10 minutes out, starting to fan out, move yourselves up on the side, and then possibly with only a meter's difference, you can then cut that down in a good strong sprint and the first person will then win the race and cross the line first. So I've just given you a few ideas about the basics of drafting, something for you to try out in your training and your touring, and uh, yeah, something to enjoy over the course of your race season.